Would you like to take field photos using UField? In this tutorial, I will show you how step by step. I will explain how to set up your layers to be able to take one or more photos. Welcome to Pergis. For this example, I will use a point vector layer and a table where I will store the photos. Both layer and table are within a geo package. The project is not packaged for QField or QField Cloud yet. If you want more information about how to create a QField project with QField Cloud, I recommend to watch my video about QField with QField Cloud. I will leave the link of this video in the description of this video. Continuing with the configuration needed to add photos, basically we have to create a relationship between the point layer and the table. Before we create a relationship, we need to verify the layer and the table have a common field. I'm going to open the attribute table of the point layer to show you the field called unique ID. This is the field I will use to create the relationship. This is a text field with a length of 50. Likewise, in the table, there is also a field name unique ID. Since the table is where I'm going to save the photos, I added a photo path or photo location field. Now that I already reviewed that my layers have the required fields, I'm going to go to the project section to create a relationship. Make sure you have the layer and the table in your project or map before you create this relationship. Now here in the project section, I go to properties. Then I go to relations and I'm going to add a new relation. I'm going to call this relation point photos. I'll change the relationship strength to composition. And here I select the point layer, which is already selected as the reference or parent layer for the field one i'm going to change it to unique id and now for the referencing or child in this case table uh, i'll select table observations and i'm also going to change the field name to unique id now i click ok and then apply and ok now that the relationship is already created, I'm going to configure the point and the table. I will start with uh, the point layer. So I'm going to open the properties by doing right click on the layer. And then I go to attributes or the attributes form. And here I'm going to change the type of uh, form from auto generate to drag and drop designer. Here, I'm just going to leave the fields that I want to see on my form in QField. So I'll remove the, this one, the first one, which is the auto calculated field fit. So I select it and then I click on the minus sign. I'm also going to do the same for the unique ID. I don't want to see it on the form. However, I'm going to select it within the available widgets because we need to set it up to be able to how to create the unique ID. Now that it's selected here within the available widgets, I'm going to change the widget type of this field to hidden. Again, in this case, we don't need, we don't want to see this field during the data collection. In order to create the expression, I'm going to scroll down to the default value property and then under the default value, I'm going to open the expression section or expression builder. And I'm going to search for the unique ID expression. If we type U, U, ID, we have some options here. I'm going to use the one without braces. So I do double click and it's added to my expression. And we can see here in the preview that a unique ID is created. Then I click OK and I click Apply. OK, now the next step is to add the relationship that we have created. Here in the available widgets under relations, we see point photos, which is the relationship we created. So I'm going to drag it to my form layout. And here uh, I'm going to leave the relationship or the cardinality from 
many to one. We can add a name for it. So I'm going to call it the same point photos. And it's basically that's all we need here. So now I'm going to click on and apply and then OK. Now I'm going to configure the table. So I'll do the same. I open the properties of the table, go to the attribute form, and I change it from auto generate to drag and drop designer. Once again, I remove the fields that I don't want to see uh, in my form for the data collection. And now uh, I select unique ID, but now it's going to be a little different. So here, basically, we're going to see the relationship we created in here. So we want to make sure this is correct. And then we can remove the display expression if we want to, or we can maybe use um, unique ID as a display expression. After that, we just double check that everything looks right. And then we can click on apply. Next, I'm going to create the path for the photos. So I select the field in the form layout, and I change the widget type to attachment. Here we see the default path, and this is before this project. It is packaged to QField, so this is going to change after we pack it this project and I'll show you the new location when we're in that step. For the store path as we're going to change it to relative to project path. And the last thing we're going to do here is to change the type of content to image. And then we click on apply. And the last change we're going to do here is in the photo ID field. So I selected it from the form layout. And this is basically, we want to create a, an ID for each photo that we take. So we're going to change the widget type to hidden. And this is similar to the unique ID steps that we did with the point layer. Widget type hidden, and then we go to the default section to create that expression for unique ID. Search again for a UUID, and then we use the one without braces, and then OK, and then apply, and OK to close this window. And now I'm going to save my project. Uh, it's already saved, but I'm going to save it once again to make sure uh, I'm saving the changes that I just made. OK, so now we have the project ready. Uh, I can add a base map. We can go to Quick Map Services. This is a plugin that I installed. And I'm just going to add a Google satellite image. And I'm going to save my project once again. Now I'm going to package this project to be able to use it in QField. To do this, we need to have the plugin QField Sync installed. If you haven't installed it yet, you have to go to the plugins section, manage and sell plugins. And of course, if not, if it's not installed yet, you search in non install. But technically, this is what you need to look for QField Sync. Then you install it. And after the installation is complete, we can close this window. Then you're going to see the tools uh, somewhere in this area in your screen. In my case, is on this top right side. First, I'm going to go to configure current project. And again, if uh, you want more information about QField Cloud and, and this part again, you can see my video of QField and QField Cloud. Here, we make sure I add the base map to my configuration. And if I go to the cable export, I can uh, change here if I want to the, the type of action for each of these layers. I can leave it as a copy or I can also like change it to offline editing if I'm going to be offline. And then I click apply and then OK to close the window. OK, so now that I'm ready uh, to upload this into QField Cloud and get package, uh, I select the cloud. I enter my username and password and then I uh, click on sign in. 
here I see the projects that I already have in the cloud, but if I want to add a new project, I click on the create a new project tab here on the bottom of the screen. I'm going to leave the options as recommended. Click on next. You can change the name here if you want to, or you can leave it as it is. And here, this is the local directory or the location where the project will be saved after we package this for QField. So make sure you take note of this location because this is where we're going to find this project and also where the pictures are going to go. After that, we click on Create. Okay, now that my project has been uh, created, I'm going to click on OK. And then I'm going to close this window and now I'm going to open my uh, mobile device and show you uh, how this looks in, in QField app. And also I'll take a picture or two and then sync it and open QGIS again. Now here in QField app, if you haven't downloaded the app, you can find it either in uh, your Google app, Windows app, or Apple uh, store. Uh, then you download it and open QField app. And then you need to enter your credentials for QField Cloud. Then after you enter your credentials, then um, you should go to the section that is my project. And here, if I refresh, or actually I should see it somewhere here, QField, Photos, Photos QField is the one that I just created. Uh, then I, it says available on the cloud, but it's missing locally. That means that it's missing on my mobile device. And I'm just, for your information, I'm using an Android uh, system or an Android phone. Then I click on Photos QField to download it. Now that I have been uh, successfully downloaded, I'm going to um, select it and to open it. And then here on the layer list, I should be able to see my observations point and my tables observation. And I'm just going to add a one, one record. So I open the layer list again, and I, I'm going to enable editing on the lower side of my screen. I'm going to click on the pencil to enable editing. And now I'm going to go back to the map and click on the plus sign here on the bottom. And I'm just going to enter some of this information really fast. And do test for comments. And then I'm going to click on add to add a photo. Here I can also add a name for the photo. And then if I select the camera, I'm just going to take a picture of my keyboard. If it's good, I selected it. I can uh, then you can see the the photo ID uh, wasn't hidden, but we can see that um, it created a unique ID for that. Uh, now I'm going to click on the check mark. And if I scroll here, we can see that there's one photo, test photo, and then uh, one more. Let's do test photo two. And I'm just going to do the same. Let's take the picture of my computer again. Look if it looks good. I click on the check mark and then click on the check mark again. And now I have two photos. And now I'm going to submit this record by clicking on the check mark. Now I'm going to go back to the layer list and I can see that I have, that I have some edits. Now I'm going to select uh, that cloud and I'm going to push the changes. So that way they go up into the cloud. Now that they are successfully pushed to QFIL Cloud, uh, I'm going to go back to QGIS. We'll see you there.
Okay, now here in QGIS again, make sure you have your project open. This is QFill Cloud. And I'm going to go now to the, or I'm going to do click on Synchronize Current Cloud Project, which is this or cloud. Here, basically, see already recognizing that there's some photos. You can see the JPEG. Uh, I'm going to leave the settings as they are, and I'm going to click on Perform Actions. Okay, now the transfer has finished. I click OK. And if I open the attribute table, we can see that there was one point. There's a unique ID, but the photos are stored in the tables. Or I'm going to open the attribute table, the table, and we can see here that there's two photos. In order to see them, there's different ways. One is you can click on the um, switch to form view, and we can see here one of the photos. This is um, the old photo that I took. Before I finish this video, I want to show you how to locate these photos in your file explorer. So I'm going to open, remember I, I mentioned to remember the location of where the project is getting packaged. So I'm going to go there. So here, in my folder, I go to the Q field, in this case is the cloud. And I find the folder where my project have been packaged, which is uh, Photos Q field. And here, since I added photos, it automatically created a folder that is called DCIM. And then here I can see the photos if you want to find them this way too. And it has an ID, which makes it easier for data management. Well, that's all. Uh, I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Thank you.